everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be talking about my top TV shows on Netflix. Now I know that there are lots of other platforms available. I have lots of favourite shows across so many different places like The Imagineering Story on Disney Plus and This Morning Show on Apple TV and uh, loads of other things but I thought I would try and narrow down some of the best things that I've loved on Netflix. Now before we begin this is by no means an extensive list of the best of Netflix because I have the world's strangest taste. I don't love all the really super popular stuff a lot of the times and I do sometimes struggle to find things that I know I'm going to really enjoy so you'll pretty much gauge exactly what I quite like at the beginning of this video but I grew up loving things like American TV reality shows, I liked like things like 90210 and The Hills, I loved Gossip Girl and so I found myself over the last year gravitating towards things that are borderline really trash to binge worthy, lighthearted, just easy to watch shows. There are a couple of other things in there but mostly it's very easy watchable TV stuff. So I've got no movies or documentaries in this, just TV, um, seasons that you can binge and enjoy and love as much as me. So without further ado, let's talk about them. First up we have Modern Family. This literally is about three modern families and their lives. It's a sitcom, there are 11 seasons but there are only eight on Netflix right now. The final few are on Now TV if you're in the UK. But this is just such a good show, feel good show. Everyone will love this. The families are really wonderful. You get to really fall in love with all the characters and I cried so much when it ended. It was just brilliant. Next we have How I Met Your Mother, another really great sitcom show. If you enjoyed Friends and you enjoy sort of like a friendship unit following them, you'll really love How I Met Your Mother. It follows mostly Ted, who's the main character, um, but there are four friends and Ted is telling the story to his children on literally how he met their mother. So it's just so lovely and wholesome and easy to watch, very funny, great characters, um, and yeah, binge watch this so quickly. Shit's Creek is one that I think everyone's been talking about over the last year, rightly so, because it won so many awards and has been so popular. But I wanted to put it in because I personally lost Mm, interest in Schitt's Creek about season two or three and then I picked it back up again and fell in love with it all over again like at the end. I feel like the middle bits of it weren't my favourite but um, it definitely picks up so persist with it if you haven't and it's about a millionaire family who lose everything apart from one asset which is a small town in Schitt's Creek or it's called Schitt's Creek and they live in a motel and it's just so great. The characters are just honestly hilarious. And I was really sad when this ended. I really felt like, oh, I really could have done with like three or four more seasons, but it does end at a nice point and I think you'll enjoy it. Next is one that I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but one that Benji and I did really enjoy. It's called Friends From College. And it's, a, again, the friendship unit that obviously met at college and then they are reunited 20 years after their graduation. And you sort of find out who's been together, who's done what since they have known each other. Um, and it's just really nice. There's loads of famous faces in it and it was just a really easy watch. So if you haven't tried that already and you've maybe tried all the other things I've already mentioned, then try Friends With College because it's good. There's two seasons, it's quite short seasons. I think they're only, from memory, six or seven episodes, um, but it was good, really good. I have seen so many other shows, but I'm gonna move on. Um, one of them that I was gonna say is we're gonna pick up New Girl again because we started that, but we haven't finished it. But that's mostly my sort of sitcom um, comedy uh, TV shows that I've been loving. So let's move on to dramas. So the first one, which has definitely been one of my favourite TV shows ever, was How to Get Away with Murder. Now, I don't watch a lot of sort of action, crime, investigation style TV shows. Benji does, loves them. There are some we watch, especially on, I feel like, BBC and ITV. I love the, like, Broadstone, Luther, um... Dr. Foster, like those sort of TV shows I love. But on Netflix, it's not really where I gravitate towards. So How to Get Away with Murder, we discovered a few years ago and we loved it so much. We actually watched a whole season when we were out in America because we didn't have it in the UK Netflix yet, but we managed to watch it out there. It's just brilliant. It's basically about a group of students and their um, criminal law professor um, and 
there's so many twists and turns and the show often will take you to like the end of the night like flash forward and then it will rewind and show you exactly how the order of events happened to get to that point. The characters are amazing and it gets better and better with each season. I feel like it's the most addictive, gripping, a brilliant show and both of mine, my family and Benji's family have been watching it recently and loved it too. So massively recommend How to Get Away with Murder. I had to add Bridgerton. I did not think I'd like this guys and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna watch it because everyone else is watching it. I loved it. I loved it because it was just so easy to watch. The characters are just really likeable. Like it's just easy to uh, enjoy seeing what they get up to. The Duke, hello. Um, but it's, it's not normally, like a period drama is not normally something I would like, but this one sort of reminds me of my, my Gossip Girl heart because there's um, a lady, Lady Whist Whistledown, Whistledown, that writes and they all read her little snippet of newspaper thing that goes around, but it's mostly following one family, there's eight siblings and you sort of see what, what happens and their quest for like finding love and getting married and stuff, it's very good. Emily in Paris, it's a comedy drama, an American girl moves to Paris, starts working in a marketing firm. She lives in this insane, <laughs> super luxury apartment that like is totally unrealistic um, for like an intern or the level that she sort of comes in at. But she is so fun. She, she almost has a sort of like social media influencer presence at times and it's like really funny for me to just enjoy it and watch it. I really loved it. I binged this. It's definitely my kind of show and apparently there's another season coming I think. So yeah, I loved Emily in Paris. It's great. And my last one in this category is Dynasty and I think it's just like no surprise that I enjoyed Dynasty so much. I actually am cheating slightly because I haven't finished the last episode of season two. The episodes, there's like over 20 episodes per season. I would say season one was way better than season two, but it's actually a remake from a 1980s soap, I think. I obviously never watched the original, so I just didn't know what I was getting in for, but it very much reminds me of that Gossip Girl style. It's got the like millionaire families, rival families, and there's loads of drama and parties and business and love and and all sorts of stuff that happens. Um, very gripping, very good. Like I said, I've much preferred season one, but I just really loved it. It was definitely, again, my kind of thing. Moving on to reality shows. I, I love a good reality show. One of my favorites last year was Selling Sunset. Three seasons of this following uh, twin brothers that own a company called the Oppenheim, Oppenheim, Oppenheim Group, which is a real estate business that sells super luxury homes in LA. And they have lots of staff, but the show follows uh, only the women, but the, I looked into this and the company do <laughs> do hire men and women, but it's just these uh, group of women that seem to work in the office. In the show, you'll see what I mean, they have their own like desks and you follow them around in LA, what they get up to, what their lives are like. Obviously some of it must be scripted, um, but it's quite interesting because half of you wants to see what the homes look like and, the sh and then when they do viewings and show potential buyers, and then the other half is sort of invested in the drama and the each individual um, character and person, whatever. So yeah, loved that so much. I also did watch, um, was it Millionaire Beach House or something like that? I love anything that's remotely similar. So yeah, that was great. I've just started this, so again, slightly cheating, but I had to add it because it's just totally my thing. It's called Bling Empire. It's, as I'm filming this today, it's like number nine, in, it's in the top 10 of um, Netflix, and it's following Asian and Asian American people that live in LA that are super wealthy rich, and they have a crazy lifestyle, and that's all you really need to know. It's just following them around. Again, I'm sure some of it's scripted, but I just love this kind of trash. I love being absorbed in these people's lives and seeing what they get up to so I had to put that in. The next category of TV shows that I absolutely adore is competitions. I didn't realize how much I love like a good competition show and there are so many great ones on Netflix but the first one I had to mention is Instant Hotel. There are two seasons of this and it's about Australian duos like couples that own rental properties, a bit like Airbnb and they, there's people, there's lots of different um, people that are competing against each other and they go and stay in each other's rental houses and then 
they rate each other and the best one wins. It's really good, really good. Some of the people are really um, unlikable and some of them you just, uh, you really want them to rate them highly because you think their houses are great and it's just so interesting. I just loved it. So Instant Hotel was a whim. Next one is called Blown Away and Benji and I nearly lost it when we saw they added an extra season, a new season, season two on Netflix recently. Blown Away is a glass blowing competition show and it's just, so fascinating the talent that these people have they get given a brief and they have to basically design something and I have no interest in glass blowing but for some reason Benji and I both love this together it's so great when you find something you love to watch with your partner and uh, the minute we both saw this we were just like yes perfect this is the kind of stuff we love just enjoying in the evenings the next one is American barbecue showdown which is very similar style in the sense that it's a cooking show but it's basically uh, competing by barbecuing food. So uh, different people, they get given different brief and different meats and they have to cook on, uh, well, different types of cooking skills and they cook on like barbecue and open flames and all sorts. And it's just so interesting. I think the aesthetic of it is really lovely as well. There's like a big um, barn, like warehouse where they get their food and they can chop their meats and stuff. And then they come outside and it's just really wholesome and nice. And I just love it. So I had to mention that one. But this one's called The Final Table. It's a cooking show like I've never seen. And it's filmed in a huge studio. And there are some of the best chefs in the world that are competing in twos. And each week they create a different... Um, dish from a different nationality so you know there's all different types of foods they make but it's beautiful and they're super talented and then they present their meals to the judges and yeah you know the rest so loved this the next one is a show that I have loved and like love a lot I talk about it a lot is The Circle and it started in the UK on Channel 4 we have two seasons that are available and recently Netflix added The Circle USA, which was actually filmed here in the UK. They filmed it in the same apartment block, in the same um, flats and apartments, if you like. And it's, it's a weird concept. It's kind of like Big Brother in the sense that people are put in individual flats and then they communicate with each other via like a TV screen. And it's very much an experiment, like social media based. Everyone has their own um, profile picture. And, and their name and their age and um, whether they're single or not and a bio and then some people come in as a catfish but it's all about building bonds and relationships and the most popular player wins £100,000 or $100,000 in this case which I just loved this show it's the most recent one we just finished literally a few days ago and it was really easy to binge watch and I just got really absorbed in it um, so yeah had to mention The Circle. And if you haven't seen the UK ones, they're on Channel 4 and they're great. Lastly, in my competition section is Next in Fashion. This is hosted by Alexa Chung and Tan France from Queer Eye. Queer Eye is a show that Benji and I have had a love-hate relationship with. I think we loved it at the beginning, loved it. But the more recent seasons have felt a little repetitive because you know what's coming. Like this, you know, people come, they tell their stories, they improve their lives um, and then you see them at the end. So I do love Queer Eye, but I didn't put it in this list. But let's go back to Next in Fashion because that is a brilliant show. It's a fashion design and styling competition. It's for fashion designers and basically they get given a brief, they draw out and design what they want and then they go and pick the fabrics and they make it and then they fit it to a model and then the model walks it down a catwalk, like a runway and I just loved this. So good, so interesting. Um, really cool to see how people, they pair people up and it's interesting to see how they both like work together. So yeah, really enjoyed this one. Last but not least, I have two home ones that I just had to mention and loved. So tidying up with Marie Kondo, firstly, which I know most people have seen or know who this lovely lady is. She's a little Japanese woman that goes into people's homes and helps them declutter and organize their stuff. And it's just so satisfying. But the one that I loved even more than that was Get Organized with the Home Edit. And I love this so much, I actually bought their book. But it's basically a business um, run by duos Clear, 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 and Joanna. And they are fabulous. I follow them on Instagram as well. And honestly, everything they do is just my crack. Like, all the organizing, everything's in like clear, they call it bins, like little buckets and they label everything up. And oh, I just wish my whole home 
could be organized by them. Sometimes they have like normal everyday people and households and then other episodes or like both episodes are split between like a celebrity house and then like a your average joe and it's just so nice to see and i loved it so much so i had to recommend that too so that wraps up all of my netflix recommendations tv shows as you can see my taste is so strange so if you think i'd like anything that i haven't mentioned already i might have seen it but if i haven't um i will let you know so leave it in the comments for me have a little chat about tv shows with me and i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and enjoyed this if you did give it a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to my channel and yes i will see you again very soon bye